Good morning friends. In this video, we will see question number 77 to 86. We will cover 10 questions in this particular video. And all these questions have been taken from NTA UGC NET English Literature Paper 2, December 2018. We have discussed 76 questions till now. And we will continue from there. So let's get started. The question is In which work does William Blake say that Milton was a true poet and of Devil's Party without knowing it? So the option A. The Marriage of Heaven and Hell. Option B. Songs of Innocence. Option C. London. Option D. The Chimney Sweeper. So the answer of this question will be option number A and that is the marriage of heaven and hell. The marriage of heaven and hell is a book by William Black. It is a series of texts written in imitation of biblical prophecy but expressing Black's own intensely personal romantic and revolutionary blips it opens with an introduction of a short poem rintre roars and sacks his fires in the burdened air william blake claims that john milton as a true poet and his epic poem paradise lost war of the devil's party without knowing it milton's satan was truly his masiha he also claims that. Now question number 78. The Norman conquest was a significant landmark in English history. What French did the Normans speak and what was it known as? Option A. They spoke Norman French. It means Anglo-Norman. Theirs was certainly not the standard French. Option B. They spoke standard French of mainland France. Their French was very sweet and musical. Option C. They spoke a dialectal, dialectal French. It means Anglo-Phrygian. Somewhat closer to the Persian. Parisian. Option D. They spoke normal French rather distinct from Anglo-Norman. Another standard language. So the answer of this question will be option number A. That is, they spoke Norman French, which means Anglo-Norman. Theirs was certainly not the standard French. They spoke Norman French, it means Anglo-Norman. Theirs was only certainly not the standard French. Question number 29. Which of the following statements on Raj Mohan's wife is not true? Option A. His vivid description of the routine of Bengali households reveal a lot about the 19th century. Option B. Bankim Chandra published it soon after serial, serialization and was elated in seeing its first copy. Option C. By common consent, Raj Mohan's wife is the first novel in English published by an Indian. And option D. The novel was serialized in 1864 in a short-lived live magazine in Kolkata. So the answer of this question will be option number B and that is bunk. Sorry, we have to find out not true. So all these three are true and that is which is not true. That is option number B and Bankim Chandra published it soon after the serialization and was elated in seeing its first copy. So, Bankim Chandra published it soon after serialization and was elated in seeing its first copy. Now, question number 80. Deconstructionist critics argue that texts are never free from. Option A. The material conditions that determine the production and reception. Option B. The equivocal and ironically unstable worldview of the author. Option C. Distortion inherent 
in the rhetoric city of language option d the interpretations bestowed by the totalizing critic so the answer of this question will be option number c that is distortions inherent in the rhetoricity of language deconstructionist critics believe meaning in literature is created during the act of reading a text if language is the ground of being then the world is infinite text that is an infinite chain of signifiers always in play because human beings are constituted by language they too are texts texts are never free from distortions inherent in the rhetoricity of language now question number 81 1992 demolition of the disputed structure in ayodhya produced two controversial literary responses identify them option a annals and antiquities between sunlight and shadow option b the moors light last sigh lazza option c chronicles of a riot foretold sam option d out of place the algebra of infinite justice so the answer of this question will be that is option number b the moors lost sigh lazza now see more about that the moors last sigh is the fifth novel by salman rushdie published in 1995 the book draws on a variety of real historical figures and events including the surrender of garanda by bob dil the demolition of babri masjid the 1993 bombay bombings the gangster and terrorist lazza is a novel in bengali by tashlima nasrin a writer of bangladesh nasrin dedicated the book to the people of the indian subcontinent beginning the text with the words let another name for religion be humanism lazza is a response of tashlima nasrin to anti hindu rights that erupted in parts of bangladesh soon after the demolition of babri masjid in india on 6 december 1992 now 82 albert camus borrows the following epigraph in his novel the plague from it is as reasonable to represent one kind of imprisonment by another as it is a represent anything that really exists by that which exists not option a jeremy bentham's the principle of moral and legislation option b robert burton's the anatomy of melancholy option c daniel defus robinson crusoe and option d james hogg the confessions of a justified sinner so the answer of this question will be option number c that is daniel defus robinson crusoe Albert Camus born in 1913 died in 1960 borrows the epigraph to the, his novel The Plague from Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe Melly Albert Camus was a French philosopher author and journalist his views contributed to the rise of the philosophy known as absurdism and his notable works The Stranger the Myth of Sisyphus the Rebel the Plague and the awards which were given to him Nobel Prize in 1957 at the age of 44 in 1957 the second youngest recipient in history now 83rd which ancient greek writers name is directly mentioned in lord byron's poem the isles of greece option a asclepius option b sappho option c euripides option d sophocles so the answer of this question will be option number b that is sappho Lord Byron's poem The Isles of Greece is a personal lyric and elegy. Greek writers burning Sappho name is di- directly mentioned. The Isles of Greece, the Isles of Greece. 
We are burning Sappho, lowered end. We are grieve the arts of war and peace. We are delos, road and forbs sprang. Option number, sorry, question number 84. What is the delicate balancing act of Andrew Marvel's Horatian Ode? Option A. Celebrating Cromwell's victories while inviting sympathy for the executed king. Option B. Celebrating the restoration while regretting the frivolity of the new regime. Option C. Praising Roman virtues while endorse, endorsing Christian belief. Option D. Praising feminine virtues while mocking the fixation on chastity. So the answer of this question will be option number A. That is celebrating Cromwell's victories while inviting sympathy for the executed, executed king. Like to his choir mistress, and Horatian odd operates on several levels. On the surface, it is conventional, celebratory, odd about a military and political hero, praising his exploits and virtues. One can infer from Marvel's other laudatory poems about Oliver Cromwell that the poet genuinely admired the Lord Protector. The tone of the poem is not openly ironic. Andrew Marvel was an English metaphysical poet, satirist, and politician who sat in the House of Commons at various times between 1659 and 1678. During the Commonwealth period, he was a colleague and friend of John Milton, and his notable works, The Rehearsal, Transport, Mr. Smyre, smart on the divine in mode and his pamphlet an account of the growth of poetry and arbitrary government in England which of the following themes was not common to the works of cavalier poets such as Thomas Crew, Sir John Tam, Edmund Waller Sir John Shuckling, James Shirley, Richard Lovelace, and Robert Herrick. Option A. Courtly ideals of the good life. Option B. Carpe diem. Option C. Pious devotion to religious virtues. And Option D. Loyalty to the kings. So we have to find out not. It means option is C. Pious devotion to religious virtue was not there. And all the three are present there. Pious devotion to religious virtues, the Cabrier poets, members of the aristocracy, wrote in the 17th century and supported King Charles I, who were later executed as a result of civil war. Cabrier poetry on the subject matter different from traditional poetry. Instead of talking issues like religion, philosophy, and arts, Cavalier poetry aims to express the joy and simple gratification of celebratory things much livelier, livelier than the traditional works of their predecessors. Most cavalier works had allegorical and or classical references. Question number 86 and it is going to be the last question. Ah. What a trifle is a heart. If one's into love, hands it come. All other griefs allow a part. To other griefs and ask themselves but some. They come to us, but us love draws. He swallows us and never chores. By him as by chance sought whole ranks to do die. He is the tyrant pike our hearts the fry John Donne in 1633 which sentence best paraphrases line number 5 of the passage above option a emotion can damage us but none as severely as love option b love tends to grab us and never let go option c distress comes in many forms but none lasts as long as heart Heartache. Option D. 
unbidden pain afflicts us but we are loved by love so the answer of this question will be option number d that is unbidden pain afflicts us but we are loved by love the stanza is composed by john don poetry the broken heart line number five means unbidden pains afflict us but we are lured by love the speaker declares that any man who claims he has been in love for an hour is insane not because love decays in so short a time but because in an hour love can devour ten, ten men zondon was an english poet and clerical cleric in the church of england he is considered the preeminent representative of the metaphysical poets Bythantos 1610 Pseudomata 1610 Ignatius his conclave conclave 1611 Devotions upon emergent occasions 1624 and the class is over thank you